main success criteria for this rehearsal is for the spacecraft to flawlessly perform its activities as if it were Pluto, with everything the same, except that Pluto's not there. So it's really dress rehearsal for the spacecraft. How do we get to Pluto? Practice, practice, practice. Today is July the 5th, and we are entering the encounter rehearsal. The ground operations are going to pretty much mimic what we're going to be doing in 2015. So it will think it's actually flying by Pluto. So it will point to where it thinks Pluto is. We're flying by an object that is a huge distance from Earth, and we're trying to hit a box that's 100 by 150 kilometers wide. And that then leads into maneuver planning and, and trajectory control needed to thread that, that needle and hit that small box. It's way the heck out there. What adds to the complication, uh, maybe by an order of magnitude, is the extended one-way light time. Three hours and 34 minutes and a handful of seconds. We're learning to actually analyze the engineering data from the spacecraft under the pressure of time. On the ground, we will see a loss of signal, and then about 50 minutes later, we'll get that signal back. Well, it means that the command was received by the spacecraft and acknowledged, so that our uplink path is, uh, is good. The best thing coming out of this rehearsal is about the team. How does the team come together? Because in 2015, we don't want to learn about that stuff. We want to learn about Pluto. Those are all invaluable to get us ready and, and uh, practiced for the one and only shot we'll have to explore the Pluto system. So everything is right now as nominal as we were hoping for it to be. Going great. We've been waiting uh, 12 years since we wrote the proposals to do this rehearsal. It's the last big step before we can do the encounter. We think that we are about 10 million miles out from Pluto and closing. But so far, so good. We're off to the races. Today is our 2,724th day in flight. <laughs> this has been a long time coming, literally. Yeah, I only want to say thanks for all the work. Let them eat cake. One of the biggest things that we're practicing in this rehearsal is something called the late update. And this is where we correct the pointing of our sequence in the last few days before Pluto so that our pictures will be pointing at Pluto, Sharon, Nixon, Hydra, rather than black sky. Part of what we're doing, a very large part, is to receive images that are coming from the spacecraft and use those to help refine our course and to compare that to what they should be on a perfect trajectory and then from the differences make decisions about how we either fire engines or change the timing of the encounter. The challenge of flying a, a spacecraft past Pluto is the distance and the speed that we're flying by. The close approach occurs within a few hours. We have in our sequence commands that will take pictures of Pluto, send them to the ground, and then the navigation team analyzes those pictures and they come up with essentially a mathematical representation that gives us the relative location of Pluto from the spacecraft. Navigation is a critical component to the success of this mission because everything in science is based on the results of navigation. The accuracy of the navigation is what's so important especially towards the very end. There's so much data being taken that's crammed in the last few days of the encounter since the spacecraft is moving so fast. We're trying to point cameras and other instruments to Pluto from the spacecraft. In order to point those instruments accurately, we have to know where the spacecraft is rough towards flying by Pluto. We have uh, two teams because it's best to have both belts and suspenders if you want to make sure your pants won't fall down. The thought of entrusting that to one group of people doing things one particular way was a little bit too much for the once in a lifetime kind of opportunity for a mission like this. The project wanted an independent check on what the primary navigation team was doing, so they hired us to provide that. Buy that a little bit. What we've got, the problem I'm having though is that 
Pluto is only getting big, really big in the last couple of weeks, you know. Right. So you're not having months, really. You, you know, this, okay. the, well, weeks. This, the way the scene looks now. But well, weeks right. versus but weeks versus days. I mean. By having two teams uh, working independently, we can at least detect the discrepancy between the two and have a much higher chance of ensuring that things are going to work out just fine. There's definitely pressure coming from everywhere uh, to try and get things done and delivered. Yeah, I can't imagine it would feel any less realistic in 2015. When you sit in these meetings, you actually feel the same kind of tension and stress that you would in, the, in real life. Even though it's pretend, we still take it quite seriously and we, we look at these solutions as if they were real data coming down. When you only have one crack at it, it has to work right and it has to work right the first time. You know, there's going to be other unknowns as we approach the real system that we can't simulate or, or fathom, really, but things will work out. We'll get there.